The autistic community in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is in full support of the bill to ban conversion therapies. Autistic people simply experience the world differently from the way that non-autistic people experience the world. We tend to stand out from the crowd, whether we want to or not. We have our own forms of socializing and communication. We choose autistic partners at rates that are 10 times greater than random choice. We are autistic parents. Fulfilled autistic lives differ from neuronormative lives. We shouldn't need to remind you that we are human beings, but unfortunately, that's the situation we are in. We are telling you right now, in this moment, that we, autistic people, are treated as subhuman. It is your choice whether you believe us or you brush that aside, but it is the truth. We need people to start listening and believing our internal experience, believing the words we say are right. Stop relying on your external perceptions of us or on something a non-autistic person is telling you of what we need. We can speak for ourselves and are here telling you what we need. You just need to listen and to ask because we are begging for you to hear us. We're just two people, but there are thousands more of us screaming out the same message that we don't need autistic conversion therapies. Early start is cruel. ABA is inhumane. PBS is coercive. Different labels, but the perverse objective of normalization remains. Banning autistic conversion therapy certainly won't remove the last 60 years of damage, but it's a start. I am autistic. Um, I'm deaf. I am fourth generation indigenous Penobscot from Maine. Um, I was the first openly elected or openly autistic person elected to government in the United States. And I also run a social media site called the Autistic OT. Um, but professionally, where uh, a lot of my work lies um, is pediatric mental health. And so I do a lot of identity development work, um, but I've also worked in patient and in community uh, settings and really to bring out the importance of um, being able to do what you wanna do in order to figure out who your identity is. Um, and that kind of goes against what ABA is. Um, I have worked with ABA in the field. I have taught with ABA um, and uh, as a mental health practitioner, I have serious concerns. Um, so I have also dedicated my life to uh, joining Tara and <laughs> all the amazing advocates out there who are working to dismantle the system um, because that's the only option. That's the bizarre thing about it is it's not only is it not banned, but it's actively funded. And my specific concern with ABA and any compliance-based program is that it grooms out those opportunities for self-actualization. And in fact, um, the individual experiences something called identity foreclosure, um, which we know in the literature, again, anxiety, depression, like trauma, um, identity foreclosure occurs when somebody else has determined your identity for you. And um, in any type of conversion therapy, that is the goal, is to turn somebody else into the version they want. Um, and we also know that, you know, so we're talking about this from a pediatric standpoint of identity development, but if you look at the lived experiences of autistic adults who have gone through some type of, whether it was conversion um, therapy itself, um, those of us like myself who grew up queer in a religious environment, um, people who grew up in very fundamentalist or very strict families, we know what that's like to have those uh, demands placed on us so that we cannot show our authentic self. Um, and it, we know from the literature and from the experience of autistic adults that what ends up happening is a lot of mental unwellness not because we're autistic, um, but because of the disconnect and the dysregulation of living in society that doesn't want us. Conversion therapies violate autistic human rights. 
New Zealand ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Three clauses relate directly to our concerns. Article 9 relates to accessibility and appropriate support. For example, it is unfair to think that you are benevolently helping autistic children by forcing them to speak. They need access to autistic ways of communication, otherwise you are denying their rights. Article 15 is about freedom from torture or cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. Article 17 pertains to protection of the physical and mental integrity of the person. Systemic ableism attempts to rationalize autistic conversion therapy, a desire to normalize arbitrarily assigned abnormal behaviors, a fear that without intervention a child will not succeed in life. This fear is used to justify coercive interventions to normalize, along with emotional and physical abuse. Autistic wants, needs, inner experiences and desires can be discounted because at some level we are not quite human. Instead, so-called autism experts are free to create a highly profitable ABA industry, privately owned businesses, with a narrative on autism built over decades by instilling fear in parents and educators. Unless we start to address the root causes of depression and suicide, autistic children will continue to be severely traumatized. Autistic children are denied the developments of autistic ways of being and autistic self-regulating behaviors. The latest evidence indicates that 50% of survivors of autistic conversion therapies suffer from PTSD. Autistic people feel unsafe and are mistreated in our healthcare system. Autistic GPs and other health professionals are forced to remain undercover. The lack of understanding of autistic needs and communication leads to autistic deaths.